Recording in progress. Progress is good. This is my friend Carlos Cedillo in, I think you're still in Austin, Texas, right? New Braunfels. New Braunfels, which is southish of Austin. Yeah, closer to San Antonio. But right so in between. Sometime in the last year or so, you launched a new project at honeytaco.com. <laughs> yes. How could we sort of, um, could we forecast into the nearish future, like over the next over the next few weeks, the way energies are moving, the way the, the, the it, it, there's so much going on right now where people are experiencing different kinds of violence. Even people who wouldn't call it violence are still experiencing violence. Um, and it's so hard for people to access that dreaming place where we connect with with manifest reality, where where it connects with with our ability to dream by by ourselves and together can be so powerful. So, like in terms of facing the challenges that we are continuing to face, mm -hmm. um, maybe over the next six weeks or eight weeks or so, would you would you want to talk some about the Mayan calendar and how you would read forward in that way? Um, maybe <laughs> in terms of like IPR is focusing on um, whatever private and public knowledge-based materials we can share with people so they, they can understand more of the context of what's going on and we can all collaborate effectively and successfully together rather than complaining and being miserable and only being able to say negative words about everything. Like we want to change that polarity and be empowered together. Um, and we know that, that our use of the calendar has really meant that to us, but, but you are able to bring some of those things in very powerful ways. So I, I would love yeah. your insights on it, however we could unfold. Well, I, wanted, I wanted to grab <laughs> that's my own personal journal. <laughs> yeah, I, I came across that in a bookstore journal. one day, and I was so excited to see you in that bookstore. <laughs> awesome. And I think there may be a few used copies on Amazon still but I think it's a rare it, it's a rare <laughs> artifact now right because like yeah. all the copies have been sold I can yeah I can or I can send a pdf if somebody wants a, I did an updated version with pdf file so I might send you a copy oh that would be amazing <laughs> that's more of the story because this goes up to December 21st 2012 right and then I it's called a personal guide to navigating the end times using the Mayan calendar. Of course, we are full fledged in these end times right now. The past <laughs> 2012, and the my uh, elders um, back in the 90s and early 2000s, they could only see up to the year 2016. They didn't know what was going to happen after the year 2016. So here we are. Uh, years after that, and this, you know, this is really going down. If you've ever been a fan of reading the Book of Revelations in the Bible, yeah, shit's happening. <laughs> Just pretty much, it really is. Like I said, it was going to happen. You know, this beast is rising up. The point of what I'm your your question is: How do we tell what's going to happen a few weeks from now? Yeah. How do, how do we direct ourselves? How do we channel like, ourselves helpfully? If you've been keeping any kind of a journal or even if you, you know, you can, you can go through your old emails or old news things or um, <clears throat> any kind of, you know, dated correspondence or, or journal notes that you've ever made or, or filed any kind of thing. Like today I filed was business thing, my partner. And, and so good luck in this book here, or your, your notes, whatever, however you kept your notes. And you can find the day, 12 Serpent, which is, I'm trying to find it here, right here. My old notes, <laughs> right here for 12 Serpent. Chichas. Day is rather intense. Watch your passions. <laughs> and uh, my parents moved to Canada <laughs> on a day like today. And um, 
I didn't fill in a lot of, of other stuff that happened on a particular kind of day. Um, but if you just you take your old notes or look back and see what happened before, you get the you get the the jive, you get the the feeling. It's a feeling of what that dream of life represents then, and then you can dream it into the future. And so you look ahead, what's going to come in a couple of weeks uh, from now. So you just count ahead. You know, tomorrow is 13 death, right? And the day for tomorrow, what is what my saying that I have for 13 death is such a day might signal the coming of a very great favor, right? So that was a very positive message for that day. So tomorrow is coming from the cosmic ancestors, right? Through death, through your crown chakra, right? And you're gonna get some kind of a great favor, something. <clears throat> and the day after that, one deer, I put excellent day for a daykeeper, mother, father to go to a low water place and burn offerings. That is one water, two days from now, right? So you can find a place where there's some water, maybe a pond or a stream or even the ocean near you and, and have a little um, candle or some sticks and matches and, and start a little offering fire. On on one deer or on one or on one, is it two deer. water one deer, one deer. deer on one deer. deer yes so that's two days from now okay. and then um so you just keep keep doing that counting looking up what the meaning of the day is and so like today is twelve serpent you can count up. 13 days and it will be <clears throat> 12 flint knife. It's not a TRT hush, but a flint knife. It's a mirror. And it says, <laughs> but here, watch it. <laughs> the, the mirror doesn't lie. And don't make any false moves. Right? So that's a that negative or uh, uh, that that's not how it's cut out. A lot of the negative energies, right? So don't make any false moves. Don't do anything against what the dream that God put into you says to your destiny, right? So watch it. Look in the mirror. Reflect carefully on what you're up to. What energies are you putting out into the world? And if there's anything negative, you can use this reflection to see it and cut it out. They know more of that negative stuff. So that's 13 days from today. Right. So so do we could is there a way that we could describe the the wave of the Jaguar Tresena and then the wave of the deer Tresena? And I'm not sure what the one after that is called, but like could we think in those terms, maybe. There are so many people in our communities who would love to be taking notes on a day-to-day -day basis, but they cannot. And so however we manage to share like in little videos or, or voice clips with one another, like we tend to work with that a lot. So the 13-day the cycles always flow in the same red, white, blue, yellow, red, white, blue, yellow pattern just like every single day goes red, white, blue, yellow, red, white, blue, yellow. So when you're counting in 13 day patterns, it's the same uh, colors and <clears throat> east, north, west, south, east, north, west, south, like that for each of the 13 day cycles until you hit all 260 days. So um, 13, 15 days from now will be one Ahau, one sun. Hmm. That day is ruled by Zochi Quetzal, goddess of feminine sex power. 
Fun topic. Yeah. <laughs> Fun topic. <laughs> I also put in there a stopping point in the march of time. Okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> time is collapsing, timelines. So one of you were talking about the regular Western Gregorian calendar. It's not working anymore. <laughs> There's glitches in the matrix of time. And in the Bible, there's several, several stories about God stopping time, right? I don't remember the characters, but there's one where the army was surrounded, Jewish army was surrounded a city and we could see it. And the God stopped the sun in the middle of the sky so that they could continue to, to battle and won, you know. And so there's other instances where God will stretch time to help people. And so that's why it's not always a good idea just to focus on just the planets, just the moon, just the stars, because there were still physical objects in this three-dimensional reality. So when we look at it in the Mayan calendar time, it's really measuring your dreams, right? So <clears throat> every time that one sun, when a how comes by, it's the 40th day of the 260 day cycle. <clears throat> it's always going to have this, it's going to have a feeling that, okay, it's something, it's a resting <laughs> point in time is not going to be, feel like you have to, get this done or that done or this uh, yeah, it's going to feel like a, a kind of a respite from the calendar the Gregorian calendar time and you're going to be able to kind of enjoy having that feminine sex power instead of like being challenged by it but, but hopefully there'll be no that toxicity anymore So, of course, there's other pretty interesting days in between now and then. Every day has got something yeah. going on. So, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I love your story. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your story. Um, there's so many parts of this that we, we can, like, spend ages unpacking and I want to be respectful of your time because you've already been on the line with me for more than an hour and I'm having too yeah. much fun so I better make sure that we stop at a good time for you what else you got oh. <laughs> so <laughs> um one thing I want to make sure to ask you before I forget I was going to ask you on telegram but I'm like I should ask him while I'm thinking about it um I, I want to ask you if you have tracks, music tracks, um, that we could feature on the radio stream. Um, I'm I'm looking for music, and I I keep thinking of yours. And we feature so you you have this awesome podcast that I hope is still there, um, where where you were um, you were Not listening there. to the sounds of plants through this particular technology and it was so cool and so like we, we've been featuring those sometimes in our conversations and also like I feel like I've been remiss because I really want to feature um some of your other music also like alongside that or, or in different situations and some of your like you've got YouTube videos out there that are really awesome guitar videos and stuff like that so like I wanted to ask you if you have any mp3s or, or if you, you can point me to something, I, I want to try to feature more of your stuff that way, because I'm thinking about it all the time. I've got some stuff on honeytaco.com. <laughs> <Right. music. Okay. laughs> so I've got several things, you know, I've got my art page, right? art videos and art, and then merch where I'm, I just made, a, yesterday, I made a bunch of yoga pants. <laughs> with my art designs on them. You made yoga pants with your yeah. art on them? Yeah. What are they, what kind of fabric are they? I have to be really careful what kind of clothes I bought. <laughs> I would love to wear clothes with your art it's on different. them. You can look on, on the, where it says merch on, on my site, there in shop, and there's merch. Awesome. And the music is there also. And 
Um, I just put it on this site called Distro Kid, which will submit it to Spotify and Apple Music and iTunes or whatever all these other. So I we'll be that. able to find you on Spotify if we're still giving <laughs> money to Spotify. Funny. We have some <laughs> issues with Spotify, but that's <laughs> I, I understand it's corporate stuff, but I really want people to buy the music from the website. Okay. So we want to make sure to, to publish a link to the music on the website so that we can encourage people who have dollars to, to yes. use them to support you. Yes. So I put a lot of new material out there, of course, called Honey Taco Express. <laughs> That's one of the things that all songs that start with Honey Taco something, something on there. And uh, <clears throat> those are the newest songs that I released. On there. I actually made a lot of it last year. <laughs> so we, while I was all in lockdown, and it's just sitting here in my studio, just like, okay, well, make some more music. Are, are, then, do you have paintings listed for sale on the website right now? Yes, also some paintings. Good, that's great. I'm looking forward to. I I got to browse some of it, but there was there's a lot there to browse through. Yeah, I modeled it after. Um, well, there's a Mayan magics website that's been on the internet pretty much since there's been an internet. <laughs> Back in the well, like late 90s or whatever it started, Mayan magic, so they're still there. And this other astrologer named Eric Francis has a planetwaves.net. I actually, I used to write for him. <laughs> I, I remember you writing for him. <laughs> Ten I years really, ago. I, I always really looked forward to your column, and then, and then it wasn't there anymore. I was very disappointed. <laughs> we had artistic differences. <laughs> that happens. Yeah, that does happen. Yeah. Um, so it, they have a bunch of stuff on both of those sites. It's not just the Mayan calendar or just astrology. You, know, you can go Mayan magics buy incense and books and crystals and jewelry and, and stuff to support them. The same with Planet Waves has all kinds of different articles and subscription levels and stuff you can. So they've been there forever as long as there's been an internet. So I wanted moneytaco.com to be something that will be there long into the future, at least another 10 years or so. But, you know, I want it to be there. And of course, always constantly adding to it so it'll be always grown so. body of work yeah yeah it's my story too it's my i'll be reposting a lot of my older stuff you mentioned the plant music podcast <laughs> it's, i don't have the that link working anymore but i have all all of the old podcasts oh good yeah. Well, go and someone we followed recently their entire podcast archive disappeared because something happened to the company that was hosting it and then they weren't even allowed to use it anymore because of the, the, the however they published it and it was just so horrifying to lose all of those tracks um we're, we're very invested in protecting our artistic endeavors so I, kept, I, I kept all the files of all <laughs> so it's like just a matter of reposting them on honeytypo.com according to their date on my calendar, especially. So if I had one that was I did on a 12 serpent day, I would find it and post it today. If I gotta look back. <laughs> are, there, there, are there yoga pants on there now? Or yes. they're on there now? So, yes. so when we get off this call, I'm gonna go browse yoga pants with Carlos Cedillo artwork. <laughs> yeah. What? Cool. Wow. That's and if there's a particular cool. painting that, that you like that uh, you don't see there yet, just you know, say, hey, do this painting. <laughs> like this one behind me, I don't have yet. I need to do a set of this painting behind me. That's coming up soon. It's such a great project. I'm so glad. Like you mentioned it to me before it went live. And I didn't, I had no idea what that was going to end up being. Um, but it's really beautiful to browse through it. I really had a good time browsing through it. And I only got through like a tiny little bit of what was there. There's a lot of really wonderful stuff. Honeytaco.com. I hope people listening to this will go investigate. There's a good blog piece I wrote for 13 Read. Mm. It's Cosmic Authority 13 on my blog. That I did a story about um, October 28, 2011. And we just had 
you know, past October 28th, 2021. <laughs> I mean, in 2011, we had this huge ceremony in San Marcos where the shamanists came from all over the world and brought water from all over the world and mixed it in a bowl and dumped it in, prayed over it and, and dumped it into the San Marcos spring there. So there's a story there if you haven't seen that. You just mentioned two birthdays of people who are important to me, who have been working with me on very scary things requiring courage. You mentioned that, so October 28th is someone's birthday and 13 read is someone's birthday. Um, wow. And that's kind of neat that you said that that way. When dates come up this way, like when, when birthdays get mentioned or when particular novels get mentioned, like there's a lot of interesting stuff that leads me places. Um, so I like to follow those things. Yeah, just uh, staying in your heart center, you know, not letting anything um, throw you off that center. You know, that's all I would want to say. And anybody recovering from a trauma, you know, it's a healing always takes time. But if you can start using the mind calendar as a journal and just putting your thoughts, your feelings, whatever happened on any day, even if nothing happens, but nothing happened, okay, on there. And then next time, maybe something will happen. And, then, <clears throat> and uh, I'll just allow, allow the healing and the growth. The future is gonna take care of itself. Um, course it does you know you can have to do something it's not about just sitting still and doing nothing <laughs> so you have to take active you know proactive stuff in the in the world to stay here and uh, just watch where you put your energy that serpent energy you make sure it's used only for positive things wisdom and, and not for striking out against the center. So we sort of described a trajectory from today, 12 serpent to one how one sun. And did you say that the, now I don't, I don't understand this part of Mayan calendaring of day keeping well enough to, so I'm probably going to say it wrong. Um, that there's a, there's a deity that 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 rules that day, and you said something about feminine sexual energy, and maybe you could say that again so that I'm not saying it wrong. Zochiquetzal <laughs> is a fem is an Aztec goddess. Uh, they call her the flower the flower goddess sometimes, and it's just a, a young feminine energy. Um, there's other feminine aspects like the jaguar, which is Mother Earth energy, and there's a rainstorm energy, which is the, rain, the energy of midwives, and um, some other some other feminine aspects for the, the moon goddess. In there. But uh, this is um, we did have a ceremony and. Um, it was at, uh, I don't have it written in here. I thought I did. At the Eye of the Dog Art Studio in San Marcos, which is kind of outside of town in San Marcos, Texas. And uh, I remember we had a nice ceremony with some good positive feminine energy <laughs> there, and it was just it was nice. Um, just nice <laughs> energy. Yeah. The ceremony. Yeah. Well, it sounds like to honor that energy would, would be something about honoring safety and interconnection and power that comes from a stabilized, nourishing place. Would, would those words be right for you? Yeah. Yeah. In between there, <clears throat> there's going to be eight Jaguar coming up in 10, ten days from today. Hmm. Jaguar. Um, now you have to watch um, the words, like the number eight could also be the word 
A T E <laughs> eaten. I haven't eaten <laughs> ate a jaguar, right? And uh, that's actually uh, having a, a had a kitten <laughs> got killed by a raccoon on a day on a ate jaguar day. Like, oh, oh. and a raccoon got it. And, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's, it's just kind of funny now. It's, it's, uh, um, to give me the Battle of Battle of Los Angeles happened on February 26, 1942. It was an eight Jaguar Day. That's when there was UFOs <laughs> over Los Angeles. <laughs> really? <laughs> the uh, it's Rage Against the Machine, and they have an album called The Battle of Los Angeles. And uh, Close. <laughs> there is um, a prophecy I heard from Tata Don Alejandro on a video he made. I guess it was 2014, maybe. It was a while back, and nobody really saw it. It was had like 36 views on YouTube, and this is the Grand Elder of the Maya talking. But he said, you know, some some of the interviewer asked him. Do you have any last words for the millennial, the younger generation? And he said, there is a hunger coming. And he didn't say any details about what that meant, but obviously hunger, you know, is not a good thing, whether that's a, a metaphorical hunger for something or actual food hunger. There's a hunger coming to the world. And it's as soon as I heard that, I, I did talk to Kalamon about that. I, I messaged him about that. And he said that it would be courageous of me to start to talk about that if I felt. Was that, it, did you ask about it in 2014 or more recently? That was like a few months, just a couple of months ago. When I, found I would it. like. I would like to talk more about that too. If you want to record for IPR and talk about that, I would be really delighted. That's a big subject. Well, um, or we can post your links when you. I just wanted to say it because I want people to know it's the same people planning this. Yeah. You know, been putting themselves on this pedestal and and just know to stay balanced. If even if it's hunger and you got to fight for food, I mean, you got to really not fight against each other you know no matter even if you're a total liberal and a total conservative or total black and white or red and brown or against each other whatever you just remember that it's it's not us you know that's trying to hurt each other and we shouldn't ever you know try to fight each other we need to share as much as you can and help each other because it's going to be tough for everybody so you might think you have a big supply and you're good and you're settled in your cabin in the woods, but you know that supply is only going to last so long. And you know it's better to share with strangers that might come back and remember you and help you, you know, or just to put out the good energy, you know, that you're a good person, you're willing to share, and not be greedy and hoarding and because of fear. Again, it's fear, 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 fear. You know, but so there's a hunger coming to the world. And just be be aware and and know that like all these the shipping containers that are being stuck in the harbors, you know, that's you know, truckers not being allowed to take their whatever <laughs> hauling around the country. You know, they you know, there's these things, they're artificial food shortages. It's not because there's not enough food, it's because it's artificial. And don't get there's this God bless her soul. <laughs> Um, other shaman I was talking to that's very good person in the shaman, shaman ways, and so we resonate a lot. But she gets into this thing with like, oh, I'll just let the system collapse. You know, the system people can go just a uh, you know very negative way of saying, well, just let the whole system collapse. You know, but that's not caring. <laughs> For the people who are going to be affected the worst, you know, you got to real still, even though whatever, even if they work for the government, you know, if they're hungry, they're hungry. You know? So you got to help 
human beings and, and have a good spirit through you. So, but just to be ready. That's all I'm saying. I don't know anything else about it <laughs> that I was told by a heavy authority figure <laughs> from the ancestors. He said, it's not him saying it, it's my ancestors saying it. So I'm forwarding on that, that message that there's a hunger coming to the world and just, uh, you know, be ready, spiritually ready. Be ready to help one another, be kind to one another, be courageous for what we are facing together. Because yeah. we're all here together. Even if we're not together, we're still all here together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're an interconnected organism. I am so glad we got to talk today. Yes. Um, you really made my day. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you take I, will, I, will, I will bug you again. <laughs> all right. Well, um, say goodbye. <laughs> wait, yeah, yeah, we better it's go into our stuff. It's too much fun to talk. <laughs> we'll just have, it, have to do it again. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll ping you. Um, and I'll probably ask you about music stuff too. Um, sure. Have a really, really, really good 12 Serpent Day. All right, thank you. Peace. <laughs>